All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, this is a video that is critical for anybody who owns their own email addresses. So for example, if you send email through like MS365, Google Workspace, have your own email server, whatever, basically anything that comes from your own domain, like for me, you get an email from me at will at spacerex.co. So I own spacerex.co and am sending email on that. And so this video is for anybody who has that because there are some major changes that are coming to Gmail, Yahoo, and I think MS365 has already implemented a lot of them about what is required if you want to be sending email to these domains. So starting February 1st, Gmail is going to be requiring SPF or DKIM email authentication if you send less than 5,000 emails a day and both SPF, DKIM, and DMARC if you send more than that. And I would highly recommend everybody just go through and do this process right now because other email providers like Yahoo and MS365 can also be more strict. And this is critical for getting your emails delivered because if you don't go and have these records, a lot of these are just going to start going to spam or not even getting delivered whatsoever. So you wanna make sure you've gone through and done this for your domain. If you've had your own email address for a long time, you probably haven't set any of these up it's really critical that you at least have SPF or DKIM, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up both of those two right now, and then also how to set up DMARC on top of that, as well as talk about what each of those actually are. All right, so now before we go over what all these things are, let's first go ahead and show you a really easy way to figure out what is properly set up on your system. And there's a great free tool called MX Toolbox that I use all the time for email delivery issues and other just general lookups that allows you to really easily get a report of exactly what's going on. And this is it right here. All you have to do is send an email from one of your email addresses that you own to ping at mxtoolbox.com. And they're going to reply with an email just like this. They're going to give you a easy deliverability report that you can just go and check on. And this is it right here. And what it does is it checks a lot of things it makes sure that you're not on any blacklists, that you've got SPF, DKIM, and then DMARC as well. And it's a great tool for figuring out if your emails are going through and if everything is really set up properly. And I also wanna talk about how these records work. So all of these records are designed to prove that when you send an email from your domain, it is not being sent from some other shady person who is just impersonating you. So because my DMARC records, if somebody tries to send an email from will at spacerex.co or any spacerex.co, they are going to get sent to spam or completely rejected. It is the ability to just say, hey, I have these authentications on there. If they don't get met, go ahead and just kick them out. And that is a way to cut down on major source of spam and email spoofing. You don't want somebody to get an email from wellsfargo.com that's actually not from the real people who own the domain wellsfargo.com. And that's exactly what all these records are making sure does not happen. And the way it all works is based off of your domain's DNS records. So in the same way that email servers know how to get you if somebody sends an email to spacerex.co, there are other DNS records that say, okay, if an email is coming from spacerex.co, this is what you should do with it. And that is where SPF, DKIM, and DMARC all live. And to do this, you simply need access to two things. One, whatever email domain you're using. So if you're using MS365, you need admin login to your MS365 for your company. Google Workspace, same thing. If you have a different service, every single good service should give you the option to do DKIM authentication on your email and tell you what proper SPF records to add in to use that. So you essentially need that login to your admin console for whoever's hosting your email. And you also require edit access to your domain's DNS records because that is where we're publishing our SPF record, our DKIM record, and our DMARC record. And it actually looks just like this. So this is my DKIM record. This is my SPF record. And this is my DMARC record. And I'm gonna show you exactly how all of those work and these are my records, my DNS records for spacerex.co. Let's go into each one of these. First off is SPF. SPF is kind of the oldest and the simplest to implement. SPF dictates who is allowed to send email, as in what IP addresses are allowed to send email on your behalf. And it works by saying essentially all the reverse lookups, what is allowed there. 
So whenever an incoming email server receives an email from your domain, what it's going to do is it's going to do a reverse lookup on the IP address that sent the email. Then it's going to check and see, does that align with your SPF records? So let's take a look at my SPF records right here. So right here, this is my SPF records. So I have a TXT record on my domain that says SPF include the Google one because I send Google from Google domains. That's who I have my email server on as well as two records for AWS SES. These are where I send emails from my forums and my website and things like that, as well as email notifications for clients. They all come from AWS SES. So you essentially just keep including different things that are allowed to send email on your behalf. And then at the end, you can do a tilde all for a soft fail or a dash all for a hard fail. A tilde all means, okay, if it matches the subdomain, it's fine. Whereas a dash all means if it's not perfect, kick it. And this is exactly what an SPF record looks like. And you should only have one per domain. And you just keep including additional pieces right here for any other things you want to be able to send email on your behalf. So assuming you're somebody who's pretty simple, you just have an MS365 or just have a Google domains, it's pretty easy to do. I'm just gonna Google SPF record, Google Workspace. And they will have a great little piece right here that will tell you exactly what to write. So that's where you see mine. You just say SPF include underscore SPF.google.com and tilde all. So that is what you do if you have Google domains and we can search the exact same thing for MS365. So this right here is what you would put for if you have MS365. And you can Google these for every single other mail provider you may have. So this says, okay, all emails will be coming from this records right here. And Outlook actually does a dash all, which is more strict. It has to match fully. You can also make that a tilde if you're sending from other domains and add them as required. So that is how you set up SPF records. It's very simple. All it is, is based off of the IP address that you're sending from. You can also add in ones. I believe Google Workspace has a good one over here. Yeah, right here, you can also show, hey, if you're sending email from a public IP address, so you've got a public static IP address, you can actually just put the IP address or that entire subnet. So you've got additional options there and you can keep customizing it as required. Most people probably will just have the two records I've shown. The vast majority of people have either Google Workspace or MS365. And if you've got your own setup, just go ahead and find where they're sending their emails from. Every good provider should have this published in an easy way find. And all you do is you find that, you go into your DNS records on your domain, and a lot of places will call this advanced DNS records. It's not that hard. I don't know why they call it advanced. And then all you do is you add what's called a TXT record, and likely you will have an at sign for root or nothing at all. So basically this means right, the entirety of spacerex.co because I'm sending email from spacerex.co, will at spacerex.co. I'm not sending email from will at www.spacerex.co. So this is likely what yours will look like or have an at sign right there. Every single one of these is a little bit different. And then all you do is you just paste this on in here and hit save. You're going to want to then go ahead and let these records publish. They can take a little while to go and then send another email to your delivery tool and make sure that these two are green. If you also send email from a website or something, go ahead and send a test email from that website as well to this email address because it'll also tell you if it passed properly or not. So it's something you've got to check everywhere that is sending email on your behalf. If you're using some other provider that doesn't send email from your domain, then it doesn't matter. But if it's sending it from your domain, you need to check and make sure these two pass still. All right, so that is your SPF records. Pretty easy to set up and they will get you the base requirement to have email being sent to Gmail and other providers, at least as of right now. The next thing you want to do is DKIM. So DKIM is an even better version of verification because it doesn't just say, oh, what's the reverse lookup of the IP address? 
it actually uses encryption keys to figure out, yes, that person is truly allowed to send email on this domain's behalf. So what DKIM is, is DKIM uses a public-private encryption key method to digitally sign every single email you send and essentially prove that you are who you say you are because nobody else would be able to sign it that way unless they had access to the private keys. And the way you set this up is you generate a encryption key called a DKIM key on either MS365, Google Domains, or whoever you're hosting your email provider through. MS365 actually just has you add a C name, whereas Google Domains actually give you the records to put in there. So what you do is you go in and on your portal, you find where your DKIM settings are in both MS365 and Google Workspace. I always just type it into the search bar at the top. MS365 puts in a really weird place under threat protection and Google Workspace has it under email settings. And it is going to give you a record to paste into your DNS records. And so that's what you do. So if we look, we can go up to my DKIM records. And right here, you can see I'm showing this publicly on screen because this is literally public information. This is DNS. You can query this for anybody's domain that you want to and see their public encryption key. So this right here is the public key that is used to prove that my emails are sent from me. So what you do is you paste in that DKIM record and normally what it's gonna have you do is once you paste in that record, it's gonna take somewhere between five minutes and 48 hours, generally within five minutes most places, but I've seen some recently that are taking like five hours to do, which is very annoying. It will then be published publicly online. After that, you'll go into the exact same portal and then hit apply. So the way this works is first, you have to have the encryption key publicly accessible, which is in your TXT records right here. And then after that, your domains will start actually digitally signing these emails. The good ones will actually go ahead and do a full verification that it works before allowing you to send the emails digitally signed. Because if they didn't and you did it wrong, you would be sending email that is incorrectly digitally signed, which would be flagged as spam. So the process there is pretty simple. You simply go into your Google Workspace account and you just have to get those records and paste them on in there. And the way DKIM works is you actually have multiple domains that you can have DKIM keys on. You can have 50 different DKIM keys and they all get checked. So essentially every time you send an email, it's gonna check all your DKIM records. And as long as one of them properly matches, then you're good. And so what this does is this proves that nobody, unless they have access to the private key that generally you will never even see, cannot send email on your behalf because they would not be able to encrypt the digital signature in the exact same way that can be decrypted by this public key. So once you've successfully gone in and added your DKIM record and hit apply, you can come back, do the exact same email test, and you should see both DKIM alignment and DKIM authentication. And we can check and see that yes, that did occur here. We can see that this is the my DKIM public record. And we can see that because everything is green over here, it did successfully encrypt it properly and therefore decrypt it properly and prove yes, this is exactly who it says it is. The only person who could have sent this email is somebody who has access to those keys. All right, so now once you have both SPF and DKIM, you're pretty much set you are going to be able to deliver email for the vast majority of people. And unless you're a large company sending massive amounts of email every day, you are going to be totally fine getting your email delivered. But let's just go ahead and do this right and finish off with DMARC. So DMARC is essentially an extension of SPF and DKIM where it now says, okay, if SPF or DKIM fail, what do you do? And so to do DMARC, you have to first have both SPF and DKIM green. So wait until you're sending email from all your servers and that all of them are coming up green with these four right here. And then we can add in a DMARC record that says, hey, if you don't match these two, what do you do? And in general, you either want to quarantine or reject. And the way you write one of these is pretty straightforward. There's a great Google Workspace help right here that walks through what they are. And you essentially add another TXT record as we have been doing. And these are the options here. I'm gonna go ahead and just show what mine is because it's honestly something that's good enough for the vast majority of people. 
So this right here is my DMARC record. So you only need one and it is going to be underscore DMARC, a TXT record. Now what I say is, this is DMARC version one. My policy is to quarantine. That means if these both don't pass, quarantine it, but don't fully reject it. That's a great thing to have when you're kind of testing this stuff out and making sure it all works. You can also write this as reject, which will mean that the email will totally bounce and not go through at all. Quarantine in general will go to spam, though if it is even more strict, like if it's more suspicious, it'll probably just bounce entirely. So it's a great idea to start with quarantine and then move up to reject. Percent, this is a great another way to kind of turn it up the heat where you can say, you know, I've got a lot of email servers. I don't want this to fully go into spam just in case something goes on. You can say maybe 50% to start. So that way, like not all your emails are going to spam, but some of them do. It's a great place to start though. Once you've got everything kind of kicked the tires and everything looks good, you can up it to hundred percent. And then this right here is your DKIM and your SPF. I would put them to relaxed. Strict is very strict. And in general, unless you're a massive corporation who is very much, people will go through leaps and bounds to copy email from, relax is good enough. And so what you can do is you can actually paste the DMARC record right into your DNS settings right now. Just add in a underscore DMARC for a TXT record and paste this on in here. And this will almost certainly work perfectly for you. But remember, before hitting save on this, you need to make sure that both SPF and DKIM are properly aligned and authenticated because if they're not, emails from your domain are going to be flagged as spam and either rejected or sent to the spam filter. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. I would highly recommend getting all green check marks on here because it's one of those things where we're getting further and further along, it's getting more and more required and eventually you're going to require this. And it's not like anybody comes in and tells you, hey, you gotta have this now. A lot of times they just start flagging your email as spam and stop delivering it altogether. So spend the time now, get DMARC compliant, and you are not going to regret it because you just are going to have much better chances of your emails going through, especially if you want something to just set and forget. MX Toolbox, not sponsored by them or anything like that, no affiliation with them. They're an awesome tool. They can show you so much more stuff as well. They'll show you if you're on a blacklist, one thing to note, if you've got MS365 or Google Domains or another really big email provider like that, and you're on a blacklist, it's because they're on a blacklist and it's really not that big of a deal. If you're hosting your own email server, that's where you really need to figure out how to get off those blacklists. But if you're having a larger company handle your email, it happens sometimes. And honestly, they all work it out. So it's nothing you need to worry about. But that's pretty much it. This is one of those things that's a little bit complicated to set up, but it's going to be set and forget, hopefully. And I've already gone through, and if you're a regular client of mine who you pay me monthly, I've already checked out your records, and if you didn't get an email from me, that means that you are all good and your records are properly set up. If you have any other questions, you can put those down in the comments below. And if you'd like to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.